Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Darlings and I'm back today. I'm starting with the 40 ounce camper from Craft Haven. Y'all, this is like the biggest mug I've ever seen, but it is so awesome. Um, so I decided I was gonna use that for my foil tie-dye. So I've taken the Deco Foil Gel Transfer Duo and I have this linked below. Y'all, this is one of the adhesives I've used. I've actually created a folder in my Amazon's Favorite Things list that has several different options of several different things that I've used. And I've taken this in about a 50-50 mixture and I've watered it down. So I've just taken the medicine cup, I've added, I've just kind of scooped out some of the deco foil adhesive and I've mixed it up with the water until you get a, you don't want it too runny. You see it's not running down the cup, but you want it a little bit, um, it's just kind of hard to, to cover a full cup with that adhesive as it is. So if you water it down a little bit, it also helps with being able to see to the brush strokes once you put the foils on. So I'm just gonna apply this all the way around the cup. I'm gonna cover the full cup and it actually dries a little bit faster using it watered down this way as well. And before I started on this cup, I did sand the cup and then I also have sprayed it with Rust-Oleum's 2X Matte Black. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this marbled cracked ice on the handle. So I'm really just making sure that I'm covering up that really, that cover, covering that really well um, with my adhesive here, just to make sure that I can get that covered. And then I'm gonna take my heat gun and just any little area, you can see where it's white, you want it to dry clear before you go to apply your foils. If it's anywhere that's like sticky or you see where it's still kind of white, that foil is just gonna stick and it's gonna kind of just be gooey. I'm just, I don't know any other way to describe it for y'all. <laughs> That's just kind of what I experienced. And there's little places that you see that you look like I did, you know, like if you can see there's places that I feel like I didn't get, I just go back in, add a little bit more adhesive there, and then I go back in with my heat gun and just dry it. And so I'm just gonna start on one side, y'all. I really wasn't sure how I was gonna wrap this whole cup with the handle on it. It's kind of hard to do because um, you can't just lay it down and just roll it over because it's got that handle. So I ended up kind of standing it up and turning my foil sheet sideways and just pressing it right up against where that handle is. Now, granted, this is gonna be my base layer. So it really is not gonna matter here if I have, you know, if, if it looks like it lays on there as a perfect sheet because it's gonna be covered up anyway. Um, but I still wanted, you know, I wanted to get as much on there as I could. And then um, you can just go back up and touch any of the other areas. So it's not a big deal on this cup because you are going to be covered up. But, you know, if it all goes on one sheet, the better. So I'm just going to press this down really hard. And sometimes you can take the, I use one of those little squeegee tools that where you put your transfer tape on your decals. You can go back and forth over that over your foils with that as well and it works really well because these actually come off the sheet you can see when I pull this back you're actually getting clear over it so here's a little squeegee tool I was referring to you can use really either side some of these foils take more pressure than others y'all if you've watched any of the other foil tutorials I've done you've heard me probably say that that sometimes you have to really press because you can see they truly are they're called easy release but some of them are a little bit easier releasing than others so, but you really want to press down until you can almost see it separate, where that foil is separating from the backing that you're gonna kind of pull off right there. And if there's areas you can see that don't wanna stick, like there were, I just haven't pressed down hard enough, so I'm just gonna go back over with my little squeegee tool, press it down until I can see that they're getting separated from the clear, you know, front piece there that I'm gonna pull off and make sure they're adhered to the cup. And then all the areas that I didn't cover, you know, underneath the handle, you just go back over. You can take that same sheet and just reapply it over and over there. So you can kind of see I'm going to go back around the bottom really well, and then I'm going to apply them to the handle as well. And then I want to make sure I was getting it under there just because if I felt like if I missed that with the tie-dye, I would at least have this underneath there that would show through. So then I'm just going to rub it right over the handle, just like I did the rest of the cup, and I'm going to go underneath the candle, I mean the handle. And then I do add a layer of epoxy here before I'm going to go in and work with my tie-dye. So I did do 25 milliliters of Countercultures Medium Viscosity Artist Resin before I come back in. You don't have to do that, but y'all, I just do that because sometimes this adhesive will pull the foils off if you try to do foils on top of foils. So I'm taking that same mixture that's like a 50-50 water and adhesive mixture. I put it in the little syringe tip bottle and I'm just going to start in the center. And I didn't, you know, freehand this out here, y'all. I just kind of started and then I'm basically just taking a really soft paintbrush and just kind of bringing it out. 
So it's, you can find it a little bit runny, but I honestly found y'all go with that because the runnier it is, like, I mean, obviously you don't want it running all the way around the cup, but you can still control where your foils are going to be on there. But at least it kind of gives you, it gives it a more, you know, a uh, random pattern when it does kind of run out. So I just kind of spread those out and I kind of started my circle. So I started with the little tight circle of the tie dye in the center. I've applied heat until I've, until it's dried, just like I did before where it's kind of clear. It's not that white color anymore. And then I just start laying the foils in there. And y'all, this is one of those things too, the more distressed for me, it was the better. I wanted to go in this random circle, but I also wanted to interlay these colors together. So I'm starting with the green leopard. And I had a lot of foils laid out here, y'all. I actually, um, I wasn't sure exactly what color. So I just kind of picked a whole gamut of rainbow colors there and then I kind of knew ex what I wanted but I thought well let me leave a few spare ones out here just in case and I just keep working that around so I'm gonna let probably let this play and let y'all watch I'm not gonna probably talk a lot here because it's more of just y'all watching this than me really telling you I really just go in there and make the most random strokes you know the first loop around you just kind of want to start to define how your tie-dye loop is gonna go but then after that, it's really just working it around, you know, as you go within the layers. So the colors that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the green tie-dye. I'm going to use the pink tie-dye here. You see, I'm going back in. And I'm kind of, you can see, I'm kind of laying those inside the green. So I'm not really truly separating the two. I kind of want them to lay, you know, side by side with each other. Because you can always go back and give yourself a more defined circle the second time. So I lay the pink, then I'm also going to use the magenta, and then I'm going to go in with the purple uh, leopard, and then I go in with the blue bubbles, and then I'm going to use the chameleon, and then I'm going to go in with the green tie-dye, and those are going to be my colors. So I do, I'm going to do, I'm just going to let you guys watch this, but I'm going to do one loop around pretty much with all the colors, and then I'm going to start kind of going back in and filling in the areas that need to be filled in. But y'all, this is like totally what I love about these cups is it's your interpretation, however you want it to look. You could do, you know, like the tie-dye rotation on both sides. Literally, I mean, there's just no, there's really no right or wrong with these. And they're so fun just because they are so random. And it's so like what your vision for it is. So I had so much fun working on this. Um, so I'm just going to kind of let you guys watch. I'll probably... I'll put some of it in fast forward and some of it at night because honestly, y'all, stick with the process and trust it when you're doing this. It take it took me a little while. Y'all know I'm a little bit of a control freak and I, I'm a perfectionist about things. So the more random sometimes is even harder for me to do. But um, but it, it did take me, you know, a good. It took me a little while to do this cup, but I had so much fun. I did the time just flew by. But I wasn't gonna leave. There was no way I could have left this all on here. Um, for you to watch but you can kind of see I'm just going to make those little marks with the syringe and then I just go back in and if it runs a little bit I just kind of went with it y'all and now I'm just basically just going to let this play and let you guys watch it I know everybody won't want to watch all these steps but I know that some of y'all will so I'm just going to let it play
Okay, so I know probably a lot of y'all didn't want to watch all that, but I know there are people that really do want to see the whole process, so I tried to leave as much of it in there as I could, so hopefully that y'all didn't want to watch it, y'all could just fast forward it. So, I, I, after I finished applying my foils, I don't seal it, I just go right into my next layer of epoxy, and I am going to use about 25 to 30 milliliters of Countercultures Medium Viscosity Artist Resin here as my next coat, and I end up going in and adding a second coat, so I let that coat dry for about four hours and then I went in with the second coat. Just because this is a pretty large cup, you're gonna have to pretty much use 30 milliliters of uh, epoxy with this. And then that's it. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. I hope it was helpful for some of you that are learning how to use foils. Um, I know that these foils have been hard to get their hands on for some people, but I know that Cindy at Southern Bell Glitter is trying to restock as often as she can and get these to you, uh, get these available to you guys as much as possible. So. Um, I have loved these foils, obviously, and this is probably one of my favorite cups I've ever done. In person, y'all, some of these colors are just so, so striking. Um, you really have to get your hands on them and try them. So anyway, I will link all the products that I use in the description box below. So y'all make sure to check out those links. And I've included some discount codes for y'all as well. And then some of the adhesives and other products I use, you can also find in my Amazon's favorite list that I always have linked down below as well and um, all the foils the links the colors and then the craft haven styles and sizes as well as in a discount code with y'all for y'all there as well so thank y'all so much for watching y'all please go like share subscribe all that fun crazy stuff and make sure you come join my dixie darlings tumblers facebook group we have so much fun over there it's where i get to interact with y'all i go live on sunday nights and wednesday nights at 7 p.m and now we have fun full fridays at 3 p.m central standard time so i hope to see y'all there so thank y'all so much for watching and i'll talk to y'all again soon mm -hmm.